What's up, y'all, hooligans? Good morning, baby. We're going live from the WMMR DB studios in Rockford. We got a bunch of good stuff coming up today. We're going to be covering a bunch of biker news. We're going to start the program off with that first and get into some really weird stories afterwards. Yes, it seems like uh, over in Europe, you guys want to ban some uh, different kind of tattoo ink. You know, what? what's wrong with you people over there? You're crazy, man. You're crazy. Don't forget the big listening party over on Discord tonight. If you can't do that, go over to the radio station at MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. That 420 hour, baby. We're going to have a good old time. Might be taking some phone calls and stuff as well. And just getting crazy with the high buddies of mine. I would like to uh, thank Big D and Greg, man, for coming out yesterday. It was beautiful. We had some freaking tacos. China Dow was there enjoyed the afternoon it was badass and morning over on facebook mindy and as well as over on youtube henry you're live oh my goodness gracious i haven't seen you for a while Hopefully you've been getting some, man. That's what I can tell you on that. Hoo, hoo, hoo. It feels like summer out here today. It's 20-something degrees. I love it. I'm in heaven. No more of that polar vortex from Canada, you freaks. Keep it up there. We don't need it. It's so damn bad that Washington, D.C. is shut down. <laughs> We're on watch, but it's too damn cold to open the government. You wimps. That's all I have to say about that, you wimps. Sleepy Joe and freaking, uh, or Beijing, Biden, whatever you want to call them. Shutting down the government because a little cold. Yeah, insane, insane, insane. Insane with the membrane. Uh, we're going to be going over to Australia. Yes, the crazy ones, man. Them crazy Aussies, man. Uh, they actually call them now Nike bikies or Nike bikers, whatever you want to say. You know, they dress up, you know, they get in all the outfits. They're more for show than they are actually uh, motorcycling. <laughs> It's kind of like our problem with the hip hop bikers here in the United States. It's like, uh, you, you, you either want to be a biker, you know, a grungy old looking thing, or, hmm, you want to wear and look like a hip hopper. <laughs> so, yeah, tonight, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, WMMRDB. You'll have a freaking blast, man. We're getting people from all over the world on the radio station. It's really taken off and really appreciate it. Don't forget, you can go over to HarleyLiberty.com for more biker news. So let's just get into this, shall we? Let's go over to Australia. Okay, we're starting off with biker news now, because I get a bunch of schlucks, you know, crybabies. They're saying, click, click on the title. Well, I guess they don't understand that this is a radio show. I know it's hard to believe, you know, but we are coming live right now on uh, the radio station studio. And what happens is I would usually give a monologue and stuff like that. But no, they'll cry and whine on me. What is with these whiners? 
Look through the program if you're on YouTube or Facebook or listen. It's not too hard. I know. I know common sense, man. It's hard to come by nowadays. People can't distinguish from this or protocol channels or motovloggers. Some people are just stupid. I hate to say it. Some people are just stupid. Mm-mm. Anyway, common chill, bikey who craved acceptance. There's a lot of those people out there now, isn't there? I don't know if it's the internet that actually blew it up, but there's a lot of damn people who want acceptance. They can't be themselves. They want to be like everybody else. They want what everybody else has. They were beat up. That is why bullying is a big word now. You know, I always thought of bullying like if you were in 6th or 7th grade. I didn't think it would carry into adults. I just didn't. Hmm. Interesting. So anyway, his craving for acceptance, he is now jailed over a Canberra shooting an arson attack. What a way to get noticed there, you dummy. Anyway. A young member of the Canberra Comancheros. I wonder if they have some hot women. Well, I already know they got hot women over in Australia, man. You know what? It kind of seems like they put our women to shame over here. It's like, wow, oh man. What are you putting in the water over in Australia to get them frickers pumped out looking like that? Anyway. He was involved in a gunfight in which the motorcycle gang's former commander lost his finger, has been jailed for nearly 10 years over the attack. Well, I hope it wasn't his finger that, you know, he would make a, a woman happy on. I, I don't know, man. I'm just asking, you know, what does he do? Put the stump in? Uh, I don't know. And in a retrial of the case, Axel Sidaros was sentenced in the ACT Supreme Court by Justice David Mossop. Can you imagine getting sentenced to prison by a judge with a name like that? Mossop. <laughs> to nine years and nine months jail after finding the 26-year-old guilty of charges, including... Intentionally inflicting grievous bodily harm, arson, and endangering life, but he was found out guilty on attempted murder. Well, he has been craving uh, some attention. I wonder if they'll give him attention in the joint. Wink, wink, if you know what I mean. Justice Mossop said the attack was instigated in 2018 after a division arose in the Camrecheros and previous commander, Peter Z Yeah, we're not going to even try that because Hollywood ain't good with them damn names, uh, was replaced by uh, another one. I pissed the Tony. Where do you guys get these names? Can't you get names in English? Damn, man. Who was killed in a civic stabbing last year. Looks like there is a riff in the Camatreros. Sad state of affairs, man. Sad state of affairs. You're supposed to be a club about brotherhood. Not about cutting off fingers. What's wrong with you? You're crazy. Sad state of affairs. Oh, by the way. I do got Sad State of Affairs t-shirts now. Yes, Sad State of Affairs over at uh, the online store. All you have to do is click that in the uh, description box if you're over on YouTube. If you don't know where it is, I don't know where the hell you been. Everybody knows. Get in the know. Look good. Justice Mossip said Sadaros, who was 23 at the time, I guess he did, uh, he was craving it. You know what sucks, though? Guy's gonna, he's 26 years old. These are the best years of your life to get some poontang. And now you're gonna be looking at a bunch of slongs, okay? Just because you wanted some attention. Unreal. 
And then you got to worry about dropping the soap in the shower now. Anyway, they went to his home in June of 2018, and two others are all wearing hoodies, full-length pants, gloves, and an Adler 12-gauge shotgun. Ooh, that was messy, I bet. 12-gauge shotgun makes a big, big mess, people. Anyway, they call it jerry cans of petrol. <laughs> You know, it's just so funny, uh, just the different uh, cultures and stuff around the world and what they call it. Uh, the United States is the only one that doesn't use metric system, thank God. You know, I kind of hate it because I wish I knew it because uh, I watch a lot of stuff on History Channel and they talk about this metric system all the time. It's like, can't you put it in friggin' uh, my friggin' way of thinking because this is too hard to follow. What's wrong with you? Anyway, he was home with his partner and their three-year-old child. He had stepped out of the shower when he heard a bang and saw people with guns. He grabbed his own rifle as shots were fired into the living room, and he returned fire himself. He was hit in the left hand and ended up needing a finger amputated. Hmm. Mossop said it was unclear which of the shooters had fired the bullet that hit his hand. At least it didn't hit him in the pecker. Getting out of the shower, could you believe that? That would suck. Getting shot in the shower with your dingling all tallywhacker hanging around, floating in the air, and here you have to do a gunfight. That is unconscionable, man. Where's the respect? Shooting the guy while he's getting out of the damn shower. That's nasty. As the shooters fled, one ignited the petrol, burning the cars. In court, uh, Justice Mossop said he was uh, an underlying emotive was wanting to do what was needed to become a patch member of the Cometeros. Hey, what happened to just the prospect period over there? You guys are like running. That's like, you know, some Sons of Anarchy crap, man really is it's like uh what was that guy he was an iraq veteran in season one he only had one nut i was like man that sucks having to do all that stuff just to get a patch screw that crap uh he maintained he had no uh, knowledge of the offenses which meant there was no expression of remorse and remained a member of the motorcycle gang the big bad scary motorcycle gang and described him as a person who craved acceptance and thought he found it amongst the Camacheros. Well, you guys crazy over there. That's what I have to say. But you got damn good women. But that's just wrong, man. Shooting a freaking guy coming out of the shower with his tailywhacker freaking just swinging in the wind. That's, that's not cool. Unfreaking real. Anyway, we've been covering this story. Man charged with murders of bikey Shane Ross and business partner. Let's take a listen, shall we? Been made over a 2019 double murder on the Gold Coast. Live now to Megan Gillespie. And Meg, who is the accused killer? Gary Rush Andrew. He was today released from custody in Grafton on unrelated matters, only to be immediately arrested again. He's facing three charges, including two counts of murder, alongside two co-accused, Brody Singh and Nathan Miller, who were charged last year all of whom police claim are lo lone wolf bikies. The trio are accused of killing former bikie Shane Ross and his business partner Cameron Martin in October 2019. Mr Martin was found shot to death in a crashed car at Talabudra and after a police search of the area, the body of Shane Ross was discovered in nearby bushland two days later. Now today, almost 18 months after the murders, Gary Brush has been extradited to the Gold Coast and Melissa Hill Front Court in Southport tomorrow. Thanks for the update, Meg. Man, even their news anchors are hot, man. We get all these scraggly looking ones over here in the United States. You get some hot ass freaking women anchors over there. Look at them titties. They're perky, baby. Man, and what she could do with that mouth, I bet. Just, oh my God, you can fantasize about this one. Ooh. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> uh, the rest of the article just shows you who the schlucks are that did this stuff. 
uh, sad state of affairs, man. You guys got to start acting freaking normal over there, man. You really do, because we're covering a lot of news that is Australia, and sometimes it even happens in Canada, man. It's something in the water, I'm telling you. Uh, damn, I would marry that one, man. Oh, my God, you had her in China now. My God, it'd be a munch fest with her. Whew. Anyway... This is the, you know, so I can point this out. This is actually, you know, the title of the episode. Banditos were falsely or wrongly accused. This is that story for you ignoramuses. Stan Springs man sentenced in Tulsa courthouse bomb hoax. I don't get it. I really don't. What are you guys calling in fake freaking bombs, man? Don't you know that's not cool? And what's even not cooler is you'll call on a phone, they'd attract. That's just like some of the people that uh, you see in the news. It's like, are you serious, really? That's how you got caught? Always on the internet, always on the phones, nobody learns. Technology is a killer, man. It really is. And sometimes you guys don't even have, you know, the cops. They don't have to work. Because you post it on Facebook. What's wrong with you? Unreal. A Sand Springs man who called in fake reports of a planned bombing at a Tulsa courthouse to try to avoid court proceedings in a domestic violence case, has been sentenced to a year in federal prison. Randy Paul Shelby, 41, also was sentenced by U.S. District Judge Claire Egan. That's bad right there. You know what? That sucks when you have a woman judge, especially one of these that, uh, you know, you know, they think women are the best and stuff like that. And, you know, they're the ones with the hairy armpits, the hairy legs and, you know, you know, their fist in the air. Women, women, women. You get one of them, dude. They're just sentencing your ass to freaking a lot of time, man. They're scary people. Uh, three years of post-custody supervised release, the attorney's office said uh, in an announcement, shall we call police, uh, not emergency number twice, in July to report the planned bombing at the Tulsa County Courthouse as a way to halt proceedings in a protective order case against him. <laughs> wow. Well, Randy Shelby didn't want to face the consequences for his alleged acts of domestic abuse, so he phoned in a bomb threat to stop the related court proceedings. He then made a bad situation worse when he tried to frame another man as a potential bomber. That was stupid. You know what? That, that's nasty. This series of incredibly bad and criminal choices landed Shelby in federal court, where today he learned that he will spend the next 12 months in federal prison. You just don't do that stuff, and especially in Oklahoma. What are you, stupid? On the evening of July 7th, an unidentified caller reportedly telephoned the Tulsa Police Department's non-emergency number and said a member of the, quote, Banditos Motorcycle Club had been making bombs. Now why you gotta go blame them? They didn't do nothing. It was you. But I bet you figured because they got name recognition, you'd get some damn attention and get this stuff closed down because you are a schluck in a protective order case. So you gotta go wrongly up say that the banditos did this. You're an asshole. You know what? You're a complete asshole. I can say that. <sighs> the, uh, the caller said he had been to the man's house where he saw the bombs. Ouch. The caller told police that the man planned to detonate a bomb at the Tulsa courthouse. Hmm. What a dick. A person placing a second anonymous call to the Tulsa police, not emergency number, 
just before 1 a.m. July 8th said he and a person been seen in a white pickup showing others a PVC pipe. Uh, then he uh, says the caller reportedly told police it looked like a bomb and described the man in the pickup. I guarantee old Schluck right here, he just described somebody he's seen driving on the side of the road. You know, that reminds me of that uh, case down in Atlanta. We were talking about the gang enhancement thing on the previous episode where he was picked out of a lineup on Facebook of all places and she couldn't be freaking sure about it. And the guy's facing like 900 years in freaking prison. Sad state of affairs, some people, man. Uh, investigator and officers determined that Shelby had made the telephone calls and asserted that he didn't to uh, stop the court proceeding. <laughs> what a dick. That's all I have to say. And then in November, he admitted to it. You're going to have a fun time in prison there, Mr. Shelby. Don't drop the soap. Well, maybe for you, you need to drop the soap after trying to blame the Banditos for something they didn't freaking do. Dick. Anyway, let's uh let's see here. Let's talk about the shoe salesman, shall we? Harley Davidson stock has stalled. Boom. Yep, yeah, boom. But CEO Joaquin Zitz. That's how I say it. It just reminds me of a zit. You wanna pop that zit to get rid of this guy. Harley-Davidson stock tumbled after the maker of the iconic motorcycles reported a disappointing fourth quarter. No, they don't lose money. The last time they made any damn good money was 2014, and then that damn downhill slide just started. <laughs> uh, but he did buy the shares on the dip. You know, that's what the rich people do. They let that stock just crash, and then they buy it all up, and then they make some big money. That's kind of what they did on the GameStop, man. Everybody wishing they got in that GameStop deal, man. <laughs> That's why I say go to Reddit, watch the Wall Street bots, and you'll get some good stuff over there, man. They work together to bring the prices up or down. I love it. It's beautiful. Anyway, shares slipped 1.3% in 2020, which is a big one when you turn it into money. U.S. trade disputes and fewer younger customers were hurting sales. Well, maybe, just maybe, you shouldn't have got rid of Buell and the V-Rod, you dummies. Zit, oh, L. Zitz Bundy, was named to the top post in May, and Wedbush Analysis, James Hardiman, added Harley-Davidson stock to the best ideals list based on the changes. Well, he's dumb. He's an idiot for telling you that. That is malpractice right there. Well, let's go buy some Harley Davidson sock. Get out of here. So far this year, however, shares have slipped about 1% to around 36 a share after giving up gains earlier in the month. Sad state of affairs for Harley Davidson, man, I'm telling you. Uh, hey, this is a good thing for all you rubs out there. Good stuff for you. Allegiant Airlines is non now offering non-stop rides to experience the City of Sturges Motorcycle Rally. Perfect for all you rubs. You don't even have to trailer the bikes there now. You can get your ass on a plane and just go. Okay? Allegiant announced they will offer nonstop rides to experience the excitement of the city of Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. <laughs> the excitement. Oh my God. You got people walking around with their tits painted because you got the city of Sturgis that gives fines for seeing titties. I would have thought in these times. Women would be equal. So that means equally able to take off their shirt and for Hollywood to see titties. It hasn't happened yet. Let's see. The limited time flights from Punta Gorda Airport to Rapid City 
uh, regional began uh, began now August six one time uh, fair one way fares uh, for these limited routes are as low as ninety nine dollars ninety nine dollars. If you're a motorcycle aficionado, the Sturgis Rally is a must experience. The flights will operate twice weekly through August 16th, and lowest fares can be found by, you know, you click there. And he says, CEO, he knows a lot of rubs go out there. He's probably one of them that go out there just to look at the titties, and then they go in the back and behind a tree and whack their stuff. That's what they do. We're excited that Allegiant is offering this incentive uh, travel option for motorcycle enthusiasts to check out the city of Sturgis Rally. Hmm. Interesting stuff. Interesting stuff. Uh, if I haven't uh, seen you on the chat room and all that good stuff, I am back in there saying hello. We got Papa in there, Lisa, uh, Sarge, Pastor, uh, Morbick, yeah, I love Morbick, man. Morbick schools, hell, man, he's a cool guy to talk to in Discord. You guys got to go to the Discord server, man. You really do. But that concludes our biker news, and now we're gonna go into other subjects for all you guys that cry that they're in the front of the show, idiots. Anyway, we got a lot of truckers, a lot of truckers. In this lifestyle, I got a lot of them that follow me. Dark Soul! I love Dark Soul. Anyway, some truckers are thriving as companies reset supply chains. You know what? That's really only until these diesel prices go up, man, because they're stupid. You know, Beijing, Biden, he don't want us to be energy and uh, efficient. He wants us to get on our knees and suck off the freaking uh, Middle Eastern people. I hate globalists. Efforts to meet uh, growing e-commerce consumer demand has less than truckload carriers handling more freight. I did uh, less than truckload, and I actually worked for Old Dominion, and that's in there. You know, Old Dominion's an awesome freaking company. It really is. Uh, a slice of the trucking industry critical to retail and industry supply chain is on a roll as the pandemic-driven boom in online shopping reshapes U.S. distribution maps. Instead of going online, go support your local mall business owner. I'm not talking about Walmart, Home Depot. No, your small business owner. Companies including Old Dominion Freight, Arc Best Corp, and Saya are expanding as businesses try to make their supply chains more nimble to catch up to rapidly shifting consumer demands. Do you think there is like a conspiracy or something uh, with all these online uh, giant retail giants that keeping us all locked up and stuff where... They make all their money. I don't know. I'm not a tinfoil hat guy. I'm just asking. That is driving more freight into less than truckload operations where trucking companies carry shipments from multiple customers on a single trailer, boosting revenues and price and leverage for the carriers. Old Dominion, the second largest operator in the sector after FedEx. FedEx Freight and Unit this month said it added nine service centers to the, its U.S. network since the start of 2020. Rock and roll. Uh, hopefully it keeps on going like that because, like I said, that diesel's going up, man. So let's go over to the crazy people over in Europe. You guys, you guys, you guys. Should we be more concerned about tattooing? Hmm... Now, in some countries, tattoo ink is almost completely unregulated, unre and as scientists are coming to discover, there's a huge gray area when it comes to what's actually in it. It's actually minerals. That's what it is. Uh, scientists, we want to listen to them, right, on COVID? <laughs> it used to be the case that a tattoo symbolized rebellion and individuality. 
from the Hells Angels to the Navy. Now, that's one thing they got right in here. When I first started out, it used to be bikers, uh, cons, and the military. They got tattoos until it went mainstream. Now, you got doctors, lawyers, all them guys doing it. A way of differentiating yourself from others. Now, though, tattoos are about as commonplace as a man bun. <laughs> what? Who wears a man bun, man? You guys are freaks, okay? Uh, what was it with this man bun stuff? And I know it's, you know, I guess popular with you youngins, man. But you look like a bunch of freaks. How did you even get any pussy? What the hell's wrong with you? Looking like that and stuff. You look ridiculous. <sighs> and you need only take a stroll down any well-populated thoroughfare to see that their popularity is far from waning. It's, uh, you know, it goes in spurts, tattoos, man. It's generational. It just goes in spurts. Uh, you either feast or you're on famine when you're a tattoo artist, let me tell you. Now the scientists are beginning to raise after tattoo artists in Europe are fighting a new ban on two commonly used green and blue. Really? You're going after the green and blue? <laughs> you might they're trying to shut them down at that point cuz if you're not using green and blue politicians always getting involved in shit they don't know in europe individual countries have been required to label tattoo ink ingredients in an effort to limit certain chemicals that are thought to cause cancer damage dna or trigger allergic reactions oh man i'm screwed i'm done i'm screwed Cause cancer damage in DNA. Oh my god. In an effort to uh, uh, harmonize tattoo ink rules across the continent, the European Union has called for a ban on pigments blue 15, uh, 3, and green 7. You're idiots, man. That's all I gotta say. You're morons. You're stupid. You're, you guys are just the craziest freaking people that I know. In the world. What is wrong with you, man? What is wrong with all of you people wanting to ban this, ban that? Don't you guys ever want to have fun? Stop being so tight ass on everything. It, really? You guys are a killjoy most of the time. In freaking sane. Huh. Anyway. That is your news today. How did you like that? Did I did I like do it better for you guys? Did I do it in the order that you wanted? You ignorant freaking POSs that were complaining yesterday. You guys got. I'm not talking about my awesome people. My awesome people. Repeat, awesome people. I'm talking about you schlucks. You schlucks need a life. You need to learn that this is a radio show. I like talking about other stuff. It don't have to be all freaking club related or biker related. Come on, man. Expand your horizons is what I say. So don't forget to, don't forget to be on the listening party. Over on our Discord server for tonight's show at 9, uh, what is it, 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. We're going to be having fun, playing some music. Hollywood's hosting the show. I'm getting higher than hell. We're all going to puff, puff, pass and have a damn good time. Discord and all our, uh, let's see here, uh, all our other platforms, make sure you uh, go visit. Until then, that is the show from WMMR DB in Rockford over on the radio station. Go listen to that kick-ass music, man. And thanks for all the support. We appreciate it.